Uh, nice to have a little catch up again for bring us up to date with what's going on and one or two things that have developed for you. So your supporters are, are in the know. Obviously, a few hours ago, you made that first summer signing and Christopher Long coming in. Just tell us really what in that DNA of the player himself attracted you to him? Because obviously, he was right at the top of your list. First of all, as a scouser. And <laughs> I mean that in a, in a complimentary way, not a negative way. Certainly, I, I like scousers. I think they're tough people. Really proud people. I've steel about them. Um, can you have a team full of them? No. So I'm not um, I'm not suggesting we're going to, you know, aren't the, the, the rest of the signings are all going from Liverpool. Um, but they, they've got a, a real steel that runs through them. It runs through the city. Um, so before you even, you know, set off and speak to, speak to Chris, you, you know he's going to be of a certain calibre of person. And you find out it's from Highton. Not the most glamorous part of the city. You, you 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 do some digging into his background when you speak to other coaches. You know, one of his coaches, former coaches, said, "You've got a Premier League player." You know, said, "You've got to get out of him." Well, that's the challenge. That's the challenge for us. You know, he, I think he's excited to come here. We're certainly excited to have him. He's probably not being utilised to his full potential in the last couple of years. But, you know, that's to our advantage because we, um, sorry, we've, uh, you know, recognised that and I think we've got a very good player. So the ball's now in his court and my court to get to work together to, for that to happen. You relish that type of challenge, don't you, Dave? You and your coaches because... You know, Mikel Mandron came, he's probably got a little similar background to that, not probably realised his potential and become the top goal scorer last season. We, we can't afford... <laughs> if we're in the market for Johnson, Clark Harris or Malik Wilkes, the, you know, there's the Russian billionaire in charge. That's, that's the truth. We have to find, you know, these um, unrealised talents and what's you know, the biggest thing that we do at this football club is develop players. And that's not just me, that's Kenny and Alex and, and the, the whole academy staff with our own academy players. So we, we don't shy away from developing players and making them better. And hopefully Chris will be added to that list. You know, if you spoke to Chris Porter, for example, who comes with 33, I think he was, I'm pretty certain he would say that he's improved as a player in the last four years, that's a 33-year-old who walks in the building. Chris Long at 26, I think he is. I've got no doubt that we're going to make him a better player. I mean, only he's going to be ultimately judged on scoring goals. That's what strikers are. You know, Mika was no different last year. Chris Porter's no different. You know, Chris will be no different. You know, Owen Dale is no different. Charlie Kirk is no different. However, we, we've, we've, I think we've improved all them players. And Chris is another one to add to that list, and that's what we've got to do. Obviously, you've got your list of targets, and you're going to set them out. But strikers are always the hardest, probably, aren't they? Because they're the ones that, you know, that to win you, win you the games. The difficult one, done and dusted. And so you must be well pleased that Chris Porter signed that 12 months that you asked for. Michael Mandra was under contract, and you've got your new recruiting as well. So good options there for you. Yeah, I think the, the one... Well, the biggest area to improve from last year was probably scoring goals. I think we had something like the third or fourth most key passes in the league. We had the third or fourth expected goals in the league. You know, Hull and Peter were the top two. Then it's, I can't remember who it was, it might be Oxford or, or Blackpool, then us. Well, the fact that, that that just, and these aren't our stats, these are just objective stats company. These, they, that shows that we've been creating chances. Now, it's not just about Mika or Chris or Owen or Chris Long now and, and Charlie. It's about your Ollie Finney, your Tom Lowry's, you know, them, them players, Callum Ainley's. They've all got to chip in, as well as your centre-halves, as well as your full-backs. Um, because it, the, the chances might fall to them as well. And, and as a team, because we're not going to get a 25-30 goal man. We're not going to get an Ivan Tony or Johnson Clark Harris. We'd like a 
uh, you know, two 15 or 20 goal men, that would be really helpful. And a 15 goal man, and then then the midfielders chip in with six to eight each. Because if you do that, then, then you've got a great chance of you know, a successful season. So, you know, that was a real area for us, us we felt, to improve. And hopefully Chris will, will go a long way, you know, to answering that, along with, let's call them non, non-striking, non, non-centre-forward players, because they've got to do a bit more. So, and if we do that, then, you know, we'll, we'll score more goals and hopefully that will equate to more points. He's a player with a real good profile, isn't he? When you look at those clubs that he's been at, you know, he's been at the top level clubs. He's been at, in the Premier League in, in Scotland. He's reaching, as you quite rightly say, that 25, 26 years of age. Still a lot more to come then? I hope so. I hope so. But it is, we don't very often get 25, 26 year olds because people, um, they, they are more. Um, Desirable because of their age, you know, irrespective of ability. Um, so more people go. For it. That's where we're at. Um, so to get someone of Chris's age profile, you know, his best years are still ahead of him, and I truly believe sat here that he could be an unbelievable signing for us because he's got a fair degree of pedigree behind him as well. But, you know, time will tell. So I'm not, I'm not um, you know, it's easy to get excited and all the rest of it. But I think we've done a real good bit of business. And hopefully that'll prove itself in the next, next season and, and beyond. You've got that ball rolling then because I know it is a hard hard slog at this time of the year to try and get those players in. You'll be working probably more hours now than you probably do when the season kicks off. But any update for, for your supporters in terms of where you are with your next sort of targets? I think uh, we, things are moving on. I think, you know, this last week we've, we're getting somewhere, I have to say, I hope. Um. You know, we've, we've still got plenty of work to do, that's for sure. Um, but I'm hopeful that, um, you know, within the next week or so, we, we'll have maybe one, one two. Possibly even three, you know, through, but through the summer. And it has been a busy summer so far. You know, I spoke to someone yesterday, I'm saying actually working longer. And, you know, just longer um, now than I do in the season. It's crazy, really. Um, so hopefully, you know, I don't want to get too much away. I'm not, we're not that close, but things are heading in the right direction. I've got three or four phone calls to make since I've finished here. Then I'm off for my COVID jab. So hopefully... Uh, you know, if I'm going to have a headache today, it'll be from the COVID jab and not football agents. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. I like that one. Of course, when, when the season ended and you had to do your retain list, there was a, a few of your own players that you gave new de- deals to, put them on the table. They're considering those de- deals or contracts. Can you bring us up to date with where you are? Is there any good news on the likes of Callum Ainley, Josh Lundstrom, Billy Shas Davies and Regan Griffiths? Those are the players I've got in my mind. Mm-hmm. One of the phone calls is to Regan's agent. I think we're very close. Billy, uh, we've been waiting for the season to finish at Yeovil. We didn't want to distract him. But I believe that's, you know, well, we're just waiting for him to sign the contract. That's where we are with that. Callum, I've got to ring his agent this morning. That's progressing. Um, you know, so there's, there's that. You know, there's, there's others. Um, in contract that we're still negotiating with, um, which takes up a lot of time, but that's not a problem. Um, that's the worth it, the players are worth it. Um, and they've been with us for the last 15 years. And I don't want, uh, you know, the next 12 months to, to leave a stain on somebody's previous 15 years. So we'll do our utmost to, um, 
give them more money and do the right thing by them. Because that's what we do. We did the right thing by Perry and we did the right thing by Harry. And, and in the end, we've done the right thing by Ryan Winnell. You know, it's quite easy after January not to play him. Quite easily. If we didn't, you know, because that's not the right thing to do. That's not the moral thing to do. So, um, you know, that's that's what we do as a football club. That's our DNA. That's our business model. Um, and if players want to run down their contracts, they, they're fully entitled to. But then that's because they don't trust us to do the right thing by them, which after 15 years is disappointing. So we'll keep plugging away with them as well. Um, and then we'll, like I say, we've got a bit of business to do still. So hopefully in a week's time, in two weeks' time, we hope to progress a bit further. It seems as though Callum Ailey just stalled a little bit, Dave, doesn't he? He, he, he did actually, he, he did actually more or less tell us that he, he was ready to sign. Is it just yeah. something that he wants to get sorted out? Um, well, I haven't really spoke to Callum. Callum leaves it to his agent, and you know his agent's a good agent. I'd say he's not a he's not a fool. Um, You know, and I've got a lot of respect for him. Always the most simplest um, contract to do. You know, the, there's been a lot of the young ones that have <laughs> negotiated on the back of success of the first team. And they might have only played three or four games. And it's like, that's not really reflective of you, but we hope you get there. That's that's the plan. You're the next one in kind of thing. Um, now, Callum's... You know, played the played the games and done well. He's, he's an integral part of the team. You know, he's we've got to get more out of him. We've tried to incentivize him to get more out of him, and hopefully that'll be resolved in the next. Well, I'm hoping the next half hour when I'm in his agent. But <laughs> <laughs> you know, these things are never straightforward, but far away. I don't. Um, he's been in Tuesdays and Thursdays. And I, like I say, I haven't spoke to him because I don't want him to, he said to speak to me, agent, fine. I don't want him to think I'm putting pressure on him or anything like that. It's, it's more important that he's happy and he wants to be here. And I think he does. The fact that he's coming in on you know, Tuesday and Thursday suggests that. But then it's got to be right for him and his family and his agent. So, you know, we'll keep, keep plugging away, keep persevering with that one. And hopefully... Uh, you know, well, as we all know, it's that a season where the speculation word gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And one player that seems to be catching the speculation eye in the newspapers, especially the Nationals, is Owen Dale. And it's it's, it's strange, isn't it, that they, they seem to be picking up on a on a Wickham offer. What, what can you tell us about that? <clears throat> we haven't had an offer for any of our players. That's the bottom line. I spoke to Owen yesterday. And I told him the same thing, and we haven't. Would, would I don't know. I've, I've been told what I, the offer may be, and I, I'd leave it up to the chairman whether he wants to respond, but I certainly wouldn't because I'd see it as that derogatory. I'd actually think they'd be taking the Mickey. Now, that's you know, they're more than welcome to make an offer for any of our players, but they've got to reach our valuation. I've told. His agent evaluation, I told Owen evaluation yesterday. So, you know, we'll see what happens. He's a good player. Don't get me wrong. You know, he couldn't hear, couldn't hear a barn door 12 months ago in League Two, but he's had a terrific season. Why? Because he's, we stuck with him, we progressed him, we developed. He's developed, you know, himself, if you like. He's a great kid with a great attitude. Is he ready to, to go up a level? Not sure. Would I be disappointed if he went to another club in League One? Yeah, I would. Because I'd see that as a sideways move and I think he could achieve more. And I think he could achieve more with us in the interim and then go on. But then that's just my opinion. There's a, there's a long way to go before the window ends and you don't know what's going to happen. So we'll see how that plays out. I'm, I'm, not, um, I'm not overly concerned because I know the position of my chairman, of which I wholeheartedly agree with him. And however much people 
may want it to happen or may not want it to happen. And that's not pointing the finger at anyone. Um, I know that the football club is contracted to the football club. So like I say, I'm not losing sleep over Owen Dale. Now, one player that you've got in your squad, he's still playing competitive football, isn't he? In uh, Donovan Daniels, he's on that World Cup duty. I think they've won already, Montserrat. I think they're due to play again today. They've got another game, uh, I think, right at the beginning of July. He was a player, unfortunately, he was troubled with injuries last time around, Dave. Do you feel this can help him or, or hinder him? What, what do you think has been his club manager? Well, I, I said to him, I said, look, you've missed a, a, a large chunk of the season and for you to stay fit, it only help you. You know, so he's played in one game. And like I, said, I think he's got, I don't know if he's got one or two left. Um, I think they've got Grenada, Grenada tonight, I think. Um, like 12 o'clock midnight tonight or something like that. So, um, you know, he's played the games and stays fit, then he's only going to come back in, in good shape. Picks up another niggle, then, you know, then we've got to address that. So, you know, he's got a big season ahead, Donovan. He's got a real big season ahead. Um, and he's got to hit the ground running. It's as simple as that. And if he doesn't, then, you know, it, it's, it's his career that's going to suffer. At the end of the day, so you know he's got to, he's got to, like I say, he's got to hit the ground running. Well, the good news also that came out uh, uh, just a few hours ago that your pre-season's all finalised now, Dave, and it looks to be a, a real well-balanced one, doesn't it? A Premier League club, a Championship club, a League a League uh, uh, Two club, and some non-league football fixtures as well. Yeah, I think we've got a good pre-season coming up. I do the games. Um, don't get me wrong. Are they important? Yeah, yes and no. I, I'm not. I'm not too. You know, if we if if I say we don't play a Premier League team, I'm a, I'm a particularly fussed. And that's not derogatory to Wolves or any Premier League team. I, I'm just talking purely about our preparations for our season. Um, you know, we didn't. Did we play one last year? Did we play Burnley the year before? Can't remember. Um, you know, it's it's not. You know, it's more important that you're concentrating on what you're doing, if you like, and the opposition and the standard of opposition is yes, is is important on one hand, but it's not on the other. It's it's all about what you're doing and the process, um, and the journey you're on with your 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 lads, your players, and you know, the, the certainly the ones that are joining you. That's you know this summer. It's important for them to understand. And there's always, um, you know, pros and cons, whether you're playing a Premier League team or a non-league team. So you've got to make sure that you you get the balance right, if you like. And I think we've got quite a well-balanced pre-season schedule. So hopefully it'll go well for us. <laughs>